Oh, hello, great readers. I'm Ba Chen. I'm Nimikong. I'm Ban Chan. In this class, I'll read to all of you. So, 30 to 6, 2 of Jane Eyre, an autobiography. S. Oh. Jane Eyre, an autobiography. Shelley Brunt. So, 30 to sec 2. Had the daring to make on his confidence. Miss Oliver already honoured me with frequent visits to my cottage. I had learnt her whole character, which was without mystery or disguise. She was coquettish but not heartless, exacting, but not worthlessly selfish. She had been indulged from her breath, but was not absolutely spoilt. She was sixty. But good humoured. Fain she could not help it. When every glance in the glass showed her such a flush of loveliness, but not affected. The burl handed. Innocent of the pride of wealth. Ingenuous. Sufficiently intelligent. A. Vively. And unthinking. She was very charming. In short, even to a collapse over her own sex like me. But she was not profoundly interesting or thoroughly impressive. A very different sort of mind was hers from that. For instance, of the sisters of Street, John, still. I liked her almost as I liked my people at all. Except that. For a child whom we have watched over and taught. A closer affection is a gender than we can give an equally attractive little acquaintance. She had taken an amiable caprice to me. She said I was like Mr. Rivers. Only. She allowed Not one tenth so handsome. Though he was a nice neat little soul enough. But he was an angel. I was. However. Out of. Clavo. Composed. And foul. Like him. I was a loose snatter. She affirmed, as a village schoolmistress, she was sure my previous history, if known, would make a delightful romance. One evening, while, with her usual childlike activity, a thoughtless yet not offensive inquisitiveness. She was rummaging the cupboard and the table drawer of my little kitchen. She discovered first two French books. A volume of Schiller. A German grammar dictionary. And then my drawing materials and some sketches. Including a pencil head of a pretty little cherub like God. One of my scholars. And sundry views from nature taken in the Vale of Martin and on the surrounding moors. She was first transfixed with surprise, and then electrified with delight. Had I done these pictures? Did I know French and German? What a love, what a miracle I was. I drew better than her master in the first goliness. Would I sketch a portrait of her? With pleasure, I replied. And radiant a model. She had then on a dark blue silk dress. Her arms and her neck were bare. Her only ornament was her chestnut tresses, which waved over her shoulders with all the wild grace of natural coils. I took a sheet of fine cardboard and drew a careful outline 
I promised myself the pleasure of colouring it. And then, as it was getting late then, I told her she must come and sit another day. She made such a report of me to her father. That missed too. Oliver himself accompanied her next to Veningatol. My featured, middle-aged, and grey-headed men. At his side, his lovely daughter looked like a bright flower near a hoary turret. He appeared a taciturn, and perhaps a proud personage. But he was very kind to me. The sketch of Rosamond's portrait pleased him highly. He said I must make a finished picture of it. He insisted. Two. On my coming the next day to spend the evening at Vale Hall. I went. I found it a large, handsome residence, showing abundant evidences of both in the proprietor. Where summoned was full of glee and pleasure all the time I stayed. Her father was affable, and when he entered into conversation with me after tea, he expressed in strong terms his approbation of what I had done in Morton School and said he only feared from what he saw and heard I was too good for the place and would soon quit it for one more suitable indeed cried Rosamond she is clever enough to be a governess in a high family in the land Mr. Oliver spoke of Mr. Rivers of the Rivers family with great respect he said it was a very old name in that neighbourhood. That the ancestors of the house were wealthy. That all Morton had once belonged to them. That even now he considered the representative of that house might, if he liked, make an alliance with the best. Formed the design of going out as a missionary. It was quite throwing a valuable life away. It appeared that, then, that her father would throw an obstacle in the way of Rissaman's union with Street. John Wister Oliver evidently regarded the young clergyman's good breath, named, and sacred profession as sufficient compensation for the want of fortune. It was the 5th of November. And a holiday, my little servant, after helping me to clean my house, was bound, was satisfied with the fee of a penny for her right. All about me was spotless and bright scarred floor, polished grate, and well-ribbed chairs. I had also made myself neat and had now the afternoon before me to spend as I would. The translation of a few pages of German occupied an hour. Then I got my palette and pencils and fell to the more soothing because the easier occupation of completing Rasmus and Oliver's miniature. The head was finished already. There was but the background to tint and the drapery to shade off. A touch of carmine. Two. Tinged to the shadow of the lash under the other eyelid. I was absorbed in the execution of these nice details. And after one rapid tap, my door unclosed. A menning street, John Rivers. I am come to see how you are spending your holiday, he said. Matter. I hoped. In thought. Well. That is well. While you do, you will not feel lonely. You see. I mistrust you still. Though you have borne up wonderfully so far. A new publication, a poem. Golden Age of Modern Literature. 
us. The readers of our era are less favoured. What courage. To be continued.